This music, it sounds like something in an elevator. This is Turn One Thoughtsies. I'm Aaron. And I'm Chris. Oh, great. These guys are pretty interesting. But what am I going to do for today's lesson? This week, we are talking about Tier 1. It is about Tier 1 status. We're talking Tier 1 Jund, a steal of a deal right now, little under 2 Gs. Tarmogoyf is down off of his reprint, 650 bucks. Liliana, full set, 400 bucks. That's insane. <laughs> Burden Catacombs, up a little bit. Overall, total deck down, 250 for a set. Third Confidant, this card used to be like 80 bucks. It's down to 40 off the reprint. Perfect time to pick him up. $170 out the door. Black Lave Cliffs are up a little bit. $65 bucks for four cards. Whatever. I already saved so much. You've sa you've saved a ton of money, in fact. <laughs> How is that savings? Inquisition of Kozilek. Two printings. This should easily be a $25 or $30 card. Okay, those. Those are just like, uh, what were they, like five bucks each? It's a format staple. So being able to get a set for $55 should make you very happy. Wow, I wasn't expecting the Inquisition of Kozilek to be so expensive. It only runs two Thoughtseize, which I think is stingy. But, you know, you save yourself 50 bucks by only buying two. Personally, I would buy four. Oh yeah, just buy the whole playset. Everything else in the deck is pretty cheap. You know, Fulminator Mage is down off of his reprint. You get a set of them for 85, 90 bucks. I mean, all told, <laughs> you're like 2,000-ish, probably a little less. Uh, it's crazy. Just, this crazy. I mean, that's what? A semester at community college. What's that going to get you? A car. Like, not even a good car. Yeah, I have a car. I don't have to take the bus. I'm a professor. So my advice to everyone listening is if you want to play Real Talk Magic, go out, you get a new credit card with 0% interest, you throw two G's worth of cards on it, and then you go out, you start grinding GPs, start top aiding, you're going to make that two grand back in like four to five years. I think that's the perfect investment. Now I can hear people out there complaining about the price. I mean, is there another way to play the game? I'm not aware of it. Yeah, sure, because no one's ever heard of Popper, apparently. Ha! I'd love to see modern experts like this actually have to work in the popper format. <laughs> popper? I'm, you're going to have to go deeper. I, you might have to delve into it. So a while back, I was teaching some people how to play Magic, and I find that the best way to teach people to play Magic is with Popper decks, and I have a couple lying around. And I, at the time, I was playing a modern deck that tried to power out Delve creatures as fast as possible. A real deck. A real deck. Versus deck. Control. Yes. So around that time, I came up with a list for Popper, the format of only commons, it is green, black, popper, dredge. Now the aim of this deck is to fill our graveyard very quickly and play these delve creatures, which are creatures with the delve mechanic that allow us to exile cards from our graveyard. And for each card that we exile when we cast it, it costs one less. So we get these large bodies on expensive creatures that we can cast for one or two mana. The primary delve creature in this deck is Gurmag Angler, which is a 5-5 five five for seven mana mana or a single black if you have six cards in your graveyard. It's our biggest beater and will outclass almost all other creatures in the popper format besides itself, but it doesn't have any evasion and it does require six cards in the yard. Hooting Mandrels on the other hand is a 4-4 four four with Trample for six mana or one green and only five cards in our graveyard. Now he's smaller than Gurmag Angler, but thanks to Trample he can get through White Weenie and other small creature aggro strategies that can no longer chump block it effectively. Our last delve creature is Saltai Scavenger, which is a 3-3 flyer for six mana or one black and five cards in our graveyard. It allows us to push through damage by going over our opponent's creatures, and it allows us to answer our opponent's flyers as well. However, it does have a small body, and because it dies to a flip Delver of Secrets and to a new card that's popping up in a lot of popper lists, Aerial Assault, we're only running two of them in the deck. So the other half of this deck besides the Delve creatures is getting cards into the graveyard. To do this, we have a couple of graveyard engines, the first of which is Grizzly Salvage, which is green black for an instant that lets us reveal the top five cards of our library and put a creature or land from among them into our hand. The great thing about this card is that it finds our missing piece 
pieces. If we're missing a delve creature or we're missing another land drop, we can grab it with Grizzly Salvage, while at the same time putting five cards into our graveyard, which is exactly enough to cast any of our delve creatures for one to two mana. Being at instant speed also lets us play around counter magic and discard spells. Cue with the Gods is very similar. It also costs two, one and a green for a sorcery, in which we also reveal the top five cards of our library, but this time we take a land or an enchantment instead of a creature. So it's not quite as good as Grizzly Salvage, we can't grab creatures with it, but it does also cost two, and it does fill up our graveyard five cards at a time. Now, perhaps the most efficient way to fill up our graveyard is by spending no mana at all to do it. We can do this with a mechanic called Dredge. Dredge is a mechanic that anytime we would draw a card, we can instead put a number of cards into our graveyard from the top of our library library and return the dredge card from our graveyard to our hand. So Stinkweed Imp is a 1-2 flyer with effectively death touch for 3 mana, but it has dredge 5, which means if we can get it into our graveyard quickly, we can bring it back to our hand instead of drawing a card and put 5 cards into our graveyard, which once again is a pretty magic number in this deck because it makes all of our delve creatures cost 1-2 to two mana. One of the faster ways we can get Stinkweed Imp into the yard is accidentally on our Grizzly Salvage or Community of the Gods that we talked about earlier, but that's not very consistent, and it does mean we can't actually dredge it back until turn 3. So we add some more things to the deck that allow us to get it in the yard quickly and cheaply. The first of which is our best one drop, Putrid Imp. Putrid Imp is one black mana for a 1-1 that lets us discard a creature card to give Putrid Imp flying until the end of turn. Additionally, if you have Threshold or seven cards in your graveyard, it gets plus one plus one and can't block. If we play it on turn one, we can discard Stinkweed Imp any time before our next draw step, and when we start our second turn, we'll have five cards in our graveyard and be able to play any of our delve creatures that second turn if we have our second land. The second discard outlet we have in our deck is Wild Mongrel, which is a 2-2 for one and a green, and it lets you discard any card to give him plus one plus one, and he becomes the color of your choice until end of turn. Now, costing two is considerably slower for our Stinkweed Imp, but it does add a lot of consistency, and now we're at a full 12 cards that can effectively put five cards in our graveyard on turn two, which is very important. Additionally, with a handful of cards in the late game, he can be a win con all on his own. The last creature in the deck is more of a value creature than any sort of graveyard engine. Viscera Dragger is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a black, so not a very impressive body, but his abilities really make him shine in this deck. He has Cycling 2, which means at any point we can pay 2 mana to discard him and draw a card. Additionally, he has Unearth for 1 and a black. Unearth allows us to cast him from our graveyard, and he gains haste, and then we exile him at the end of turn or any time he would leave play. This means that we can discard him and draw a card and then immediately bring him back and swing for three for four mana, which might just close out a game. Cycling him allows you to add another draw step, which you can dredge back Stinkweed Imp and just fill your graveyard very quickly. Also, this is a card that when we hit it off of Grizzly Salvage or Cameo of the Gods or one of our dredge activations, we can still get value out of even when he just accidentally ends up in the graveyard. Now, the last part of our deck is some removal spells, since simply spitting out large creatures isn't enough to win the game on its own. Luckily, in green and black, we have some great answers to what our opponents are doing. Ghastly Demise is one black for an instant that destroys a target creature with toughness less than the number of cards in your graveyard. So this will kill pretty much everything in the format, and late enough in the game, it will kill anything in the format. The problem is it doesn't really do anything in the first couple turns of the game, so you really have to wait until your deck is already doing something for this card to be good. That being said, it is a great card and should be on the top of the list of considerations. Doomblade does kill a large portion of the format for only 2 mana instant speed, but because of mono black control being such a large contender and Gurmag Angler being a real threat in the format, it can be very meta dependent. This figure is a 1 mana instant that gives a creature minus 2 minus 2 and is very powerful against Delver decks, Soul Sister decks, green stompy decks, and a lot of other th these small creature strategies. And being only one mana, it allows us to interact with our opponent very early on in the game. Chainer's Edict is one in a black for a sorcery, target opponent sacrifice a creature they control. It also does have flashback, but it costs seven, and most of the time we're not going to be using this flashback cost. This is really good against decks that really only have one creature, like blue-black Gurmag Angler decks, or even when green-white hexproof is a thing. The problem is it does suffer against white weenie, affinity, and mono-green strategies. 
For our land base, because we're only two colors, we get to keep it pretty simple. We do run a full place out of Jungle Hollow for the incidental life gain and also to ensure that we have both of our colors on turn two. Uh, additionally, we run Evolving Wilds for the same reason of making sure our mana is consistent, but it also does add one card to our graveyard, which can be important. And we just round it out with nine swamps and four forests since we're mostly casting black spells. Now, when we move to the sideboard, we can see that it can be very versatile. So knowing what you're playing against can really add percentage points to this deck. Duress is huge against the blue and black laced control decks, and we can use Duress to take away removal spells or counter spells and clear the way for our big creatures. Shrivel is one in a black for a sorcery that gives all creatures minus one minus one. So while it does kill our Putrid Imps, by the time we're casting it, Putrid Imp has normally done its job, and we can wipe the board of a lot of tokens or elves and strategies with small creatures. Naturalize is a huge card in our sideboard, and I can't recommend it enough. While it is good against the affinity decks and can be a two mana instant speed stone rain or sinkhole, it's actually in the board for most graveyard hate, since most graveyard hate is artifact and enchantment based. And even when our opponent is playing something like Tormod Script, which they can sacrifice at instant speed to exile all cards in target player's graveyard, we can cast Naturalize on the Tormod Script to sacrifice it when it's not good for them, when we only have maybe one card in the yard and they don't want to use it yet. Fairy Macabre is the graveyard hate card of choice for our deck since it doesn't affect our graveyard at all. Now, it does have a flying body and you can cast it in a pinch, but for the most part, you are just going to use its activated ability, which is you can discard it to exile two cards from any graveyards. You can do it against your Pauper Reanimator player, and you can also do it against opposing Delve decks to just keep the graveyard under control and make sure that your creatures get out first. Gnaw the Bone is two and a green for an instant that lets us gain two life for each creature card in our graveyard. So it's a card that's great against aggro decks that utilizes what our deck does naturally. We really want to start filling up our graveyard quickly and cast this card. The best part about this card is that it also has flashback for the same cost, which means we'll have some instances where we get to cast it twice and gain a lot of life, or if we hit it off of Queen of the Gods or Grizzly Salvage or a Dredge, we're still able to get value out of it and we're not totally lost. Now the rest of the sideboard I like to use for extra removal spells that are only good in certain matchups. So extra Doom Blades or extra Chainer's Edicts are really good here because they're only good against a couple decks, but they're very good cards and can swing a lot of matchups. One of my favorite parts about this deck is how customizable it is. You can make it more graveyard centric, you can make it less, you can make it more madness cost based, or a ton of different mechanics in the pauper format since there's just a huge variety of cards to choose from. So it's super great to tweak and play and it's a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend it. Looks like I've got today's lesson plan all set. I'm Aaron. And I'm Chris. For extra credit, you can listen to our regular podcast at turn1thoughtseize.com. You can find us on iTunes, MTG Cast, and Stitcher Radio. And if you have any questions, you can email us, thoughtseizeyou at gmail.com. 